of Galilee He said, Peter, come to me He was calling Love came calling And to the dead man Lazarus in the grave He came much too late to say He was calling Love came calling Love came calling like a warm embrace Every doubt and ill replaced He was calling She had lived a life of such regret Beyond the line of grace And yet he was calling Love came calling Through her veil of tears and bitter pain She heard his voice so clear and plain He was calling Love came calling, love came calling like a warm embrace, every doubt and fear replaced, he was calling. Turn my life around He was calling Love came calling But when I heard the brilliant song the Freedom where my heart belongs He was calling Love came calling Oh, He was calling Love came calling Thank you, Norma Jean. Glad he called on me one day. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, then we'll have our message for the morning. Our Father in heaven, again this morning, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed me to bring forth your word this morning. I, Lord, I pray that it solves many, many issues in our lives today. I pray that Lord, the words that are spoken from your holy scriptures today will be applied directly where you want them applied. Father, we thank you for this time. Forgive us now where we fail you. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of you, Lord, and through Jesus Christ. And it's in his name I ask these things. Amen. Amen. I'm going to, uh, I'm going on the, yes. When we got to Washington, and I'm not giving you a full presentation of this, but I'm going to tell you the wicked flee when no man pursueth. I think you're going to understand that better throughout the day, uh, throughout the night. That is the passage of Scripture in Proverbs 28.1, and you need not turn there right now, but in Proverbs 28.1, that the National Law Enforcement Memorial folks and law enforcement has adopted uh, as, as their Christian passage of Scripture. And I like that because it's right out of the King James Bible, yes. word for word, Proverbs 28.1. And it's etched in stone in Washington, D.C. And uh, uh, the folks that get to see that uh, can scratch their head, 
But boy, the meaning and that power in the passage of Scripture, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. You know, uh, remember the days of uh, mom saying, don't get into those cookies I just baked? Or my wife saying, hey, I made that for such and such, don't get into that? And temptation overcomes you, and when they leave the room, you get into it. And, and, and uh, they didn't see you. They didn't even hear you. They haven't come back to take inventory. They didn't count what was there and what's not there. But you know what you did. And as soon as mom come back in the room or the wife come back in the room or whomever came back in the room, you're like, oh, man, i got to go to the other room. I can't even stay in the same room with them. Because I know what I did. I'm going to the other. You know, there's a lot of people that aren't here today because of that very same feeling. Amen, that's right. There's a lot of people that are not in churches today because the wicked flee. And you say, well, pastor, some of those people that aren't in church today may be saved, born-again believers in Jesus Christ. Yes, but they've chosen to be wicked today because they're fleeing from God. How about Adam and Eve? What'd they do? They went, they went and hid, didn't they? They knew they sinned, so, so what they didn't want to do was be around God. But you can't outrun God, right? That's right. Especially if you're saved because you got him in you. You got him in you. It's that old flesh and spirit thing that we were talking about in Sunday school, having that big fight. So we use this in our Sunday morning church service in Washington, D.C., this passage of Scripture. And um, we also will use it again today as I sum up the message today. But you're going to get a version of the message that I gave to the crew on Sunday in Washington, D.C. And, uh, but before you get that, I'm going to give you some illustrations. No, not me. I'm actually going to come down here with you. And I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I see, the Lord sees all of you today. Yep. The one thing God and I have in common right now is He sees the same people I see at the New Testament Baptist Church. Unless you're hiding in the restroom and not coming out. I can't see you there. But He can. He can see you. And, uh, you know, I come into church, and I get hugs and handshakes, and (laughs) 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 you know, you all smell so good. Even you two guys. <laughs> you too, brother. <laughs> Remind me of that Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, you all just smell so good. I've not run into one of you that stink yet. Uh, blanket chip's a little foul. <laughs> called worse but better (laughs) oh isn't it fun as we were dragging suitcases packed with heavy scriptures to the I believe on this particular day we were dragging suitcases packed with heavy scriptures uh, headed for the candlelight vigil, I believe that that particular time was on Friday, if I remember right. Honey. Friday, Friday, the weather had been terrible all day long, rain, 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 and and Friday evening it cleared up and became a fairly nice evening, and then the mosquitoes came out, and, sure. and uh, uh, but we. I thought they, they they did a drive-by with the pastor. I jumped out at Walmart, went in, bought some mosquito spray for all of us before going to Washington. And uh, so with that said, as we're dragging our suitcases, we come upon a bunch of rose bushes out there on the streets of Washington alongside the building. And my wife stopped. And she's smelling these roses. We heard that cliche, stop and smell the roses. Um, The rose bush got her attention. You know, and, and, and God used that on me. And I used that in the message Sunday. I'm going to use it in the message today. He got her attention with something that, that 
that attracted her eye. Look at those roses. She stopped. She smelled those roses. How many of you have done that before? All of us have, right? You stop and you smell those roses. You smell a wonderful fragrance. What does that do to you? For a moment in time, it just kind of dispels everything else and you just get captured in that moment of that sweet smell. You know, that's what you all smell like today to God. Amen. Like stopping by the rose bush. He sees his children in his house where he has commanded them to be. And it got his attention this morning. He's seeing you all sitting at the New Testament Baptist Church. And what do you think he's doing? He's stopping for a moment and he's going, and you smell good. And it's dispelling all of these other things. And he smells a sweet smelling savor. You see, my wife stopped to savor a moment, smelling those roses. And, and we've all experienced that. Then we've all experienced the stinky things. Yeah. What, do we, what, what do we get away from those things, right? We get away from those things. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. As you're turning there, I want to tell you that, uh, of course, you all know I could go on for hours, but I'm going to try not to do that. <laughs> but, but, you know, as I'm handing out, and all of us, as we're passing out these scriptures in Washington, D.C., and, and just all the things the Lord afforded us to be able to do financially, physically, and, and the odds we overcome, which we had asked that you all pray for us, and we know you did, we could feel your prayers, and as we're doing those things, and, and I'm just thinking, ah, oh, this is so great. This is so great. And, and this is so pleasing to the Lord. And, and, and I hope nobody back home is sitting there going, oh, if only I could have gone. You did go. You did go. You were with us in spirit. Your fingerprints were on those scriptures that we were given out. Your money fueled the ability to do this. You did go. You did go. So don't cut yourself short there. Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verses 1 and 2 with me here this morning. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be followers of God as dear children. You know that is the polar opposite of this. Wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. I'm bold as a lion. Because I have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm bold as a lion. That doesn't, mean I, that doesn't mean be offensive. That means I'm bold. I have nothing to run from. Nothing. Nothing. I stand in God's righteousness through Christ. I have nothing to run from. I'm in his house today. I don't have to carry a burden later on that I wasn't here. I don't have to carry that burden. I'm standing as righteous as a lion this morning, as well as you are. You're setting as righteous as a lion. We see, be you therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. You know, pleasant, good odor of a fragrance, and, and, and first of all, Jesus hanging on that cross bleeding <clears throat> attracted God's attention. It got his attention. And when he said it is finished and he gave up the ghost, it was as a sweet smelling savor to God the Father. That obedience and that sacrifice that we see here in verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. What does it take? It takes, we have to give, give as an offering and a sacrifice to God to be as a sweet smelling savor. Today you're giving as an offering by your presence and a sacrifice by your presence to God. You're giving that to God today. So right this moment, 
You are as a sweet smelling savor to God. You're like that rose bush that my wife stopped to partake of the fragrance of. You're Christ himself, the scripture says, he gave himself for us to God. And being in God's will, that was a sweet, sweet smelling savor to God. Are you going to smell good for God when you leave here today? And I'm going to say that question two more times. Are you going to smell good for God when you leave today? Amen. Are you going to smell good for God when you leave today? Now I said that three times because I like the number three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I could have said it seven times, but made it complete. Yeah. <laughs> Are you smelling good to God? You know, the beauty of those roses that, got my, that, that attracted my wife's attention and when she stopped to savor that smell, she inhaled that fragrance and it brought that contentment for a moment. And if Christ lives in you, you have the ability and I have the ability to smell good for God. But we also have this choice right here. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous. So we have to make a choice there if we have Christ in us and we want to be a sweet smelling savor to God. We have a choice in us. We have a choice to to partake of his righteousness in our life and display his righteousness by what we do as being a servant and being obedient and offering a sacrifice to God through Jesus Christ. To being an offering, a sacrifice to God through Jesus Christ. When we do that, we are righteous, as bold as a lion. But when we do not do that, we've chosen wickedness instead. And we have a propensity to use our own definition for these words, but we have to look at what God's definition is. If we're running from God, from being a servant to God, God says that's wickedness in his eyes. Yes, saved people can do wicked things. God, every time he sees, as he looks down on this house this morning, he sees you sitting here in Christ. He relives that sweet smelling savor of Calvary. When he sees that, he relives that sweet smelling savor of Calvary. That sin that was paid one day by Christ for us. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. God relives the sweet-smelling savor of that sin paid uh, for us on that day by Jesus Christ. But look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to do what? Triumph in Christ. Triumph in Christ. It's never the devil that causes us to triumph in Christ. It's God that causes us to triumph in Christ. And maketh manifest. You know, maketh manifest. You know, if there's something, if there's... If there's something blocking this Bible here, and, 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 I, and I get it out of the way, I have now made manifest the words on these pages. I, there, you can now see them. They're, they're, I, they've been made manifest. And when we look at this passage of Scripture in verse 14, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge. But how does he do that? By us. In every place. It's us. Since Calvary, it's now it's by us that we make manifest that sweet-smelling savor to God. It's by us. So we can stink the place up for Him, or we can make it a sweet-smelling savor to Him. But the only thing that you got to have to do either one is you got to have Jesus Christ. Amen. You must have Jesus Christ. And yes, Christians stink up the place. And yes, they can act as a sweet-smelling savor. It's, it's every individual's choice. 
And we see that today. They can be running because they're wicked, or they can be a sweet-smelling saber. There's no in-between. There's no safe zone that we can hide in between those two. We see, we see verse 15. Verse 15 says, For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. We are. We are. Are we the rose bush that all the petals are falling off of and there's nothing but briars to pull up to your face? Or are we the rose bush that's in bloom with a beautiful smelling fragrance to God as Christians? For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. Too many Christians have stopped getting God's attention. To have him stop for that sweet smelling savor. Mark yourself there in 2 Corinthians. I'll come back to that with you in a little while. But would you go to Matthew chapter 5 with me? We, we were there in Sunday school class. You know, the world is like a doctor. I don't have any doctors here, I'm safe. A world is like a doctor. That salt's no good for you. Doctor will tell you, stay away from that salt. The world will tell you, stay away from that salt. But look what God tells us here in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. He says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his what? You see, if the, we are the salt. Those of us who are in Christ are the salt of the earth. But we can lose, we can lose that, that savor. We can lose the savor by this right here. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We can lose the savor. And we see that wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men if the salt has lost its savor. Savor is lost when we stop speaking through Christ with our lives, with our Bibles, with our prayers. The savor is lost. It's lost when we do that. When we stop speaking with Christ, it's lost. I ask you to turn back over to two, chapter 2 there in Corinthians and look at verse 17 with me. Verse 17 says, "For and this applies to every one of us here today at this moment in time, but these things can change. But for we are not as many which, what? Corrupt the word, Corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity. So we're here today out of sincerity, as of God. In the sight of God speak we in Christ. Speak we in Christ. So therefore we have not lost the savor. And we are a sweet smelling savor unto God. Salt preserves things. And the salt of the earth, you and I, who give forth the word of God, who testify in our lives of Jesus Christ, preserves life. It leads people to the reward of eternal life. It melts ice. Salt will melt ice. We're not going to melt ice, but we can help melt hard hearts. And we can help preserve as a salt when we practice what 2 Corinthians 2.17 tells us, that we are not as many which corrupt the word, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. And now as you see Proverbs 28.1 on the screen behind me, I tell you again as we begin to close that a Christian can be found wicked. If you flee God... It's because you're fleeing out of wickedness. It's because you're... Now listen, 
And we've all tasted that. When you sin against God, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little admission. And, you know, and I don't know if I've said this to my wife before or not, but I may have been outside working on something 10 or 15 minutes before we eat, and my thoughts were just... <clears throat> Something, something to come across or whatever and when it come time to eat I look at her and what do I ask you to do? You want to pray for the meal? <laughs> Am I the only one guilty of that? <laughs> then yet later on you ask forgiveness because I was a part of the wicked fleeing from God. Yeah. Yeah. Now don't think that every time I ask if you want to pray for dinner. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> we have this thing that she started as, as we begin to pray sometimes. All of a sudden I'll hear, some, I'll hear her go, who is it? <laughs> Life's tough at the Burgess house. <laughs> How do you smell good to God this morning and the rest of your days? You remember what that passage of Scripture says, Christian, it's the wicked that flee when no man pursueth. It's the wicked that flee. So if you're trying to distance yourself between God and the things of God, it's the wickedness. It's the wickedness. We need to remind ourselves of that. We need to remind ourselves of that. We don't smell good in those times. We're not a sweet-smelling savor. How do you smell good to God? The first thing you need to do is you need to have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior in your life. That is the fundamental requirement, the very first requirement to even have the ability to put off a good fragrance to God. This world is sin. It stinks. God's not going to suck that into his nostrils. He's looking for the sweet-smelling Savior. He's scanning every one of us today to say, which one can I stop at and go? 60,000 John and Romans were challenged with to lift a whole lot of sweet-smelling Savior out of this house. Like one big chunk of incense into heaven. If you've been fleeing, it's because wickedness has come in between you and the Lord. Your work was made manifest in Washington, D.C. Your work, your prayers, your efforts were made manifest, manifest in Washington, D.C. We were spreading the salt that you all armed us with. You filled up our salt shakers, and we went there, and we, we salted the snot out of Washington, D.C. Amen. And, and it was exciting to know that. And one, doesn't, one never knows how many lives are going to be touched by that. One never knows how many lives will be touched by that. But the important thing today is this, as Brother Adolph comes, as our song leader comes, the important thing today is this, to understand and to believe in your heart, as Brother Dave Steele shared, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord and died for you. Born of a virgin, raised on the third day, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, it doesn't say you might be saved. There's, all discretion is taken away from you. All you must do is truly believe in your heart. If you've not done that, and I don't mean to be offensive to you, but if you've not done that, you're not going to be smelling good to God. You're not going to be smelling good to God. You're going to spend a lifetime of fleeing Him. You're going to spend a lifetime of being on the run. You're going to be like a wanted man that's wanted by the law, that every time he sees a uniform and a badge... He breaks out in hives, gets paranoid, goes the opposite direction, even when he's not being followed, just being in the sheer midst. Oh, boy. I felt sorry for anybody who accidentally 
had warrants for their arrest that wandered into the National Law Enforcement Memorial Services because they probably broke out in hives from head to toe. <laughs> Whatever the need is, if you need to come to this altar and pray during the time of invitation, maybe it's rededicate your life. Maybe it's to say, you know what? God, I've trusted you through Jesus Christ. But now I've got to put some legs on it. I have to get the wickedness out and stop fleeing, and I need to stand bold in your righteousness. Whatever the need is, you come during this time of invitation. If you'll stand with me. We're not going to tarry. We'll sing two verses. 249.